The subcommittee will come back to order. I think that we now have a better backup should anything uh, happen. So uh, we can continue our uh, subcommittee meeting where we left off. Thanks for everyone's patience and indulgence. I will now uh, begin. Uh, I just started the opening statement. I'll resume uh, at the beginning of that. Royalty payments on federal minerals are an important revenue stream for both the federal government and the states they are produced in. Therefore, it is imperative that the collection of this funding source be efficient and certain. Yet the collection of royalties is a very complex process. Indeed, the valuation of royalties involves a similar process like calculating adjusted gross income for your annual tax filing. And like your taxes, royalty payors may be subject to audits and penalties if they fail to properly calculate the value of their produced resource. Now, no one wants to be audited by a federal entity, and no one wants to pay penalties. Therefore, royalty payors have it in their interest to comply with regulations governing the valuation of their product. That said, when the auditors have set up a system wrought with pitfalls, the regulated community is bound to fail. This scenario is demonstrated by honors handling of the unbundling of transportation and processing fees in natural gas production. This dubious reinterpretation of regulations has blindsided the natural gas community and proven economically burdensome to producers. A major concern about the unbundling process is how Honor introduced its reinterpretation to producers. Rather than propose a rule or seek any input from the regulated community, Honor unilaterally decided that specific transportation and processing deductions would no longer be valid. Not only has this decision been administratively difficult and costly for producers to implement, but it has diverted attention and resources from royalty generating natural gas production. Additionally, Honor is requiring producers to retroactively apply this reinterpretation up to seven years in the past, well before Honor had published any type of guidance about the unbundling process. Despite what Honor believes, Natural gas producers are not mind readers, and forcing them to retroactively comply with a regulatory change that had not been in effect is highly disturbing. This also raises serious legal, if not constitutional, issues. Although Honor had an opportunity in its proposed royalty valuation reform rule to address the unbundling topic and to permit comments from the natural gas community, Honor has confusingly opted not to do so. Rather, this proposed rule, championed by Honor as offsetting a great, excuse me, as offering greater simplicity, certainty, and consistency in product valuation, will do exactly the opposite and cost industry millions to comply with. First, the proposed rule implements a default provision that grants Honor auditors absolute discretion in valuing produced resources. Indeed, if a royalty payer forgets to file a document, or if Honor determines there has been misconduct, which could be as simple as a typo, this proposed rule grants Honor the authority to assign any value to the produced resource. Second, the proposed rule inexplicably, inexplicably grants Honor authority to collect royalty payments on electricity produced by coal generation through non-arm's length transactions. The Mineral Leasing Act provides the Secretary of the Interior with the authority to collect a 12.5 percent royalty on the, quote, value of coal, unquote, not the value of electricity. This proposal falsely assumes a similarity of markets between coal and electricity and would require accounting gymnastics for an operator to correctly calculate the value of his coal. Now, I don't think anyone here would disagree that Honor should ensure that the American taxpayers are obtaining every dollar they rightfully deserve from federal resource production. Unfortunately, Honor is in injecting uncertainty and creating untenable situations in the valuation of produced resources. These changes a producer wrote to the subcommittee are, quote, debilitating and combined with the severe downturn in oil and gas prices is putting into question our ability to survive, unquote. Going forward, I urge Honor to consider the economic impacts its regulatory actions are having and whether driving producers out of business and promoting regulatory uncertainty will encourage continued development on federal lands. I now recognize the ranking member for an opening statement. 